Hi guys, so if you've been following my channel for the past sort of month or so, uh, you'll know that I've been working on this Warhammer 40k chess set and it's now complete. The last video was up yesterday of the final piece that I painted and in today's video I'm going to show obviously how I've made the actual board itself um, and to go through and thank everyone who has kindly sent me some miniatures. Uh, it's been quite a few people. Uh, it's been pretty awesome, say, because this would obviously cost quite a bit of money to make the chess set with the, uh, the amount of pieces that are on here. Uh, but I've been very fortunate with this channel that I've had lovely people uh, willing to send me some bits and pieces in, uh, which is pretty awesome. And also, if you want to see me, guys, and this uh, this chess set, I'm going to be down at Chaos Cards in Folkestone in Kent on the 21st of this month. So that's Saturday, 21st of January. I'm going to be taking this chess set down to uh, Chaos Cards. I'm going to leave it there for a couple of months. If you want to go and see it and you can't make that date, then you'll be able to go down on different days uh, and see it. Uh, but yeah, 21st of January, I'm going to be down there. Um, not sure the exact time at the moment, but when I do find out the time, I will post it on this video as well as... Uh, I've got to do another video, just as a follow-up video, to say the actual time I'm going to be down there. Um, so I'm going to go down there for a couple of hours, and we're going to see if we can do some sort of painting session. So yeah, you better pop down, see me, see the board, and yeah, let's paint some figures together, which would be pretty cool. So yeah, so this is something I've been wanting to make for a good two years, almost well, as long as I had this channel really. I've always wanted to make a chess set using the Warhammer figures, because I absolutely love how they look, uh, obviously especially Orcs and Space Marines. i uh, never been able to do it before, because I used to hate painting miniatures. If you've been with my channel a long time, you'll know just how much I used to go on about hating painting miniatures. Um, and it was only about, was it four months ago? Uh, came across the old slap chop painting technique. Uh, love it, hate it, whatever you want to do with it. For me, it's turned someone who hated painting miniatures into someone who now loves painting miniatures. And it's meant I've been able to paint this. Uh, it's obviously the thought of painting, was it 32 miniatures? Um, yeah, it's something that always put me off making this. So now I've finally had the confidence, the courage, the enjoyment of painting miniatures to be able to do it. Anyway, enough of the waffling. You want to see how I've made this board because obviously you've seen all the other videos of me painting all the bits. Um, yeah, let's crack on and I'll show you how I made the Warhammer 40k chess set board. Okay, let's get on with it. So I wanted the board to have like a, a spaceship vibe about it. So I went online, had a good old look around for some, uh, some tiles that I could 3D print. Came across Dragon's Rest and this Precinct Umbra core set. Um, yeah, loads of great space looking stuff here and uh, it's the floor tiles that I'm mainly using but I do use a few of their other tiles for the edge of the board. Um, so yes, yeah, so I downloaded their floor tiles but I needed to change them just a little bit as their ones had sort of these the surround bits, well, going around them. Um, so I don't, I'm not really good at sort of manipulating or changing things uh, with 3D sort of software yet. It is something I want to work on and improve on. But for the moment, I just use this little simple package called Tinkercad. Um, and in this one, I can <laughs> all I can really do is sort of like take bits off or add simple bits on. Um, so as you can see, I can just put a little box around the area that I no longer need. Uh, push a couple of buttons uh, and then it sort of it, it takes that area away, which is uh, which is perfect. And say so nice and simple. Um, one day I will have a go at I think it's Blender. Or one of the other sort of major sort of packages where you can sort of do more 3D design sort of work. Uh, but for the moment, this uh, this little thing, Tinkercad, is good enough for me. Um, so yes, obviously I make some sort of like edge tiles. I still want some of these bits on. And I make some centre tiles. And then it's just a case of setting my 3D printer. Um, I'm using the Anycubic Photon Mono, which is a lovely little printer. I've had it for a good year and a bit. And yeah, just print off loads and loads of these tiles, which I think look pretty cool. So I've made obviously a centre hole in some of these as well, because I want to put magnets in them. Um, as yeah, I want to magnetise the pieces or put magnets in the pieces as well as these boards. Just so, well, not that you'd ever do it, but just so if you wanted to lift the board up, the bits wouldn't fall off. Uh, which would be pretty cool. So yeah, I've printed out all the, uh, enough of these that I need. Obviously, each one of these squares has sort of the four little squares. So that contains, obviously, the four of the figures. And then it's a case of gluing them all together. So I've got a bit of greaseproof paper underneath, just because then when I do glue the bits together, they're not going to stick to, well, the thing that's underneath. Because good old greaseproof paper uh, does make things nice and easy 
that they don't sort of uh, stick together, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's a case of doing loads of these. Um, as you can see, I'm putting some D&D books on top. Uh, just because these printed tiles, they do start to flex after a while, unless you can keep them flat. Uh, obviously, once they're glued down, then they will stay nice and flat. Uh, but for the initial bit, yeah, putting a book underneath is pretty cool. So I've got four of these tiles in a line, and now I need to do four but going the other way. Um, and yeah, it was just a case of, well, lots of gluing, really. Lots of gluing, lots of um, greaseproof paper, and sticking books down every now and then just to keep everything in place. When I was thinking of making this, one of the main things I wanted was to make sure that none of the pieces moved once they were on there. And that's why obviously when I printed these out, I put a little hole in each one of them, or part of a hole anyway, uh, just so I can include a magnet in there. Uh, that way when I do the, um, the little miniatures themselves, each one will have a magnet in the base. Um, and yeah, it just means they're nice and secure on the chest set. So if I did move it, or someone knocks it, well, then it's gonna move. Uh, which is pretty cool. So I've been using magnets for a little while now, and yeah, I must admit, I absolutely love using these things. Um, normally, obviously, for like uh, books and boxes and things to secure lids and bits and pieces on. Um, but I will be doing some videos soon where I'm going to be using magnets to do different sort of uh, layouts in the, in the actual miniature. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that video because I'll be doing it for, um, I say, just so I can do different sort of weapon out outfits and stuff. Um, yeah, so as you can see, obviously I'm cutting these uh, MDF sheets. This was prior to me getting my laser cutter. Um, so I've got a laser cutter now, which obviously, well, laser cuts MDF really nicely. Um, so this stuff cuts really reasonably well, but it does obviously leave a bit of a, a sort of an edge on this, which you have to sort of sand down. And sometimes you do make mistakes, and the cuts aren't perfect. Um, but yeah, this didn't work out too bad. I say good old MDF sheets. I mean, this is like three millimeter MDF. Um, and of course, this is going to go on the back side of the, the chessboard you just seen because uh, I want to put some lights underneath it as well. So, yeah, just going around the edges um, and then obviously going up the centers. But I need to do it so there's gaps sort of like at either end. Um, let's say just because later on you'll see me go around with sort of strip lighting. Uh, again, when I, when I make things, I do have a, a general idea of what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I do have sort of proper notes and sizes and dimensions. And other times I kind of wing it. Um, so this one, I, again, I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. It was a case of then when I was making it. Um, yeah, sometimes you sort of like you're doing something, and then you think, oh no, it can be done better this way or that way. So uh, yeah, sometimes things do change. Uh, but one thing I say I knew what I wanted with this was definitely the magnetized pieces, uh, and definitely the board that could uh, that could light up, um, and definitely change colours as well. Uh, which is pretty cool. Apologies guys if I do sound bunged up, that's because, well, I am. Uh, yeah, for some reason this cold just keeps coming back and back and back. So I've got loads of bases. I've got my bases from Fluid 3D Workshop. Um, and you'll see that there's two sort of sizes I use. A smaller size and a thinner size for all the, uh, the pawns. And then a larger size base and a deeper base for all the sort of main figures at the back. Uh, and again, so obviously with these, I'm going to put magnets in the other uh, centre. Uh, I, lo I love using clear bases, and I normally use clear bases for well, when I'm using uh, miniatures, just because I want to be able to see what sort of terrain is underneath. Um, I have done a few sort of basing sort of videos, um, but that's normally with figures that I'm not going to actually use for any sort of game or anything. And then, yeah, just to finish off the, uh, the top board, put a nice little uh, sort of rim layer around the edge. And again, because I want this this top bit is going to be magnetised and the bottom bits can be magnetised just so I can take this off if I need to get to, well, the inside of the box really. Um, and good old grout, I love using this stuff. I probably could have just used uh, Gorilla Glue, but um, yeah, when sometimes I do print things out, there are not big gaps, but just little gaps. So that's why sometimes using the, uh, the filler is the best way to do it because it does, well, fills gaps. And yeah, easy enough to put the magnets in these little clear bases. Uh, obviously being careful not to get too much glue on there because obviously the glue that I've got it does sort of give a bit of a frosted look to um, to this plastic so that's why I put a bit of glue on the magnet and then almost rub off quite a bit just so it uh, yeah just so it doesn't make a mess yeah so I seem to be putting the, uh, the footage here in the wrong order as you can see <laughs> now we'll go back to the, uh, the the top base and just putting some more little bits around the edge 
Don't forget to check out Dragon's Rest, as that is where I got all these pieces from. Um, and yeah, once it's all sprayed black, it, uh, it all ties in really nicely, and it's looking pretty good. So with the painting for this, I wanted to keep it fairly simple, uh, so that's why I'm doing a bit of uh, dry brushing with some silver, as, yeah, I, I don't want it to sort of, sort of stand out too much. I just want it to look like it's, well, made of metal, really, I guess. And as I'm not having black and white squares, I'm having silver and copper. Um, yeah, it, you can see it reasonably well here. Uh, it does look a l more different in sort of person. Um, although I might change it a little bit more um, just to make the, the sort of copper or goldy ones look, well, more copper, more goldy. Um, but again, the thing is, you don't really need it to sort of stand out as being two different really colours because obviously when you play chess, you kind of know how the pieces move. So it doesn't matter that the pattern's not too different. So some of the pieces from Dragon's Rest, uh, as you can quite clearly see, I've kind of modified them a little bit. And I did this in Tinkercad. Uh, so yeah, basically I just sort of hollowed out the corner bit. Um, just because these are going to be like these sort of corner legs. Uh, as you can see there though, I do sometimes get fails. Uh, well, it wasn't really a fail, it was, I think it was more me breaking it off when I took it off the, um, off the stand. But um, yeah, and originally the ones that I printed off were, were super long. And I didn't really want that, so I printed off some more. Again, that's a great thing I love about the 3D printer. And obviously my one's from Anycubic, Photon Mono X. Is, yeah, you can just keep printing off whatever bits you need. And if you're not happy, you can change the size and print off the bits that are the correct size. So yeah, I wanted this to be raised again. There's a few sort of criteria that I had. And one of them was I wanted it raised off the, uh, the, the tabletop just to make it easier to pick up. Uh, this way, obviously, you can get your hands or fingers underneath the sides just to, uh, yeah, lift the thing up, move it around, carry it about, whatever you need to do, really. And then good old super glue in all the corners and the centre bits. Um, yes, it's got a nice lot of strength, this. Um, obviously, there's that big sort of circle one in the centre. Uh, and yeah, really pleased with how this came out. So it's very sturdy. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't want to drop it because it would probably break. Uh, but yeah, and it's looking, looking good. So that's it with oh, a bit of magic there. And that's it with the, uh, the top bit on. And again, I'm magnetising all the corners so it does sort of stay attached. And then it's just a case of getting some more MDF cut up. Um, yeah, to sort of go around and make the, uh, the proper box shape. And again, good old 3D printing. Absolutely love it. Uh, again, these were modified parts. So yeah, go and check out Dragon's Rest. They're precinct Umbra uh, for all their sort of like space looking stuff. But say, some of this I have messed about with in Tinkercad just to make it obviously, well, fit my needs. Um, so the bits that I've modified, I'm not going to obviously supply them or give them out as STLs because obviously they are part of this Dragon's Rest uh, Precinct Umbra set. So yeah, if you want any of these bits guys, you'll have to go there, obviously purchase it and then sort of like change, amend them, um, well, however, however you need as well. So yeah, drilling the holes in the corners, uh, this obviously did get a little bit messy but uh, we kind of got there in the end. And then yeah, good old magnets, so I am loving using magnets now, they really are just, yeah, wonderful things to use. While I'm doing that, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons for helping support the channel, as well as my sponsors Easy Roll of Dice and Anycubic. Again, just for helping sponsor the channel and making it so I can do this. Uh, well, I am now doing this full time, uh, which is awesome. So, cheers, guys. And then, yeah, like the top, um, the side bits are going to be the same sort of, just a bit of dry brushing. Um, I mean, I could possibly go in and do some sort of detailed bits here. But I kind of like the fact that it doesn't sort of stand out too much. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's nice that it is more about the, the miniatures that are actually on the board. So as well as doing the, the silver dry brush, I like to go over and do copper as well. As this just seems to make it look a bit more sort of like older, dirtier, um, and definitely shinier. Which uh, I think looks pretty cool. And definitely obviously metallic looking, which is pretty awesome. So that's the board almost complete. Now it's on to the, uh, the fun bit of putting in some lights. So I've got these um, LED strip lighting. This is obviously the uh, little power supply pack for it. And I've um, glued it in and made sure that obviously there's a hole on the outside just so I can plug in the, uh, the power lead. And because the inside is black, when this lights up at the moment, it would look, well, fairly dark. So that's why I'm just putting some, uh, some tin foil, uh, very high tech here, as you can see. Uh, but that way the light will be reflected back up and all around. So yeah, the strip lighting, uh, good old Amazon I got this from. Uh, I will try and leave a link in the description to this, guys. Um, pretty simple, uh, about £15, and there was two rolls of this stuff. And I think each roll was, I don't know, a good five metres or more. So definitely more than enough for this chest set. 
Um, so I've got another bit left over, but the only problem is you only get one of, the, one of those power packs. So one power pack can supply two lots of leads, uh, but obviously the power pack's inside. So yeah, this is why I've obviously got those supports going up and down, but leaving the gap at the end, just so I can apply the uh, this strip lighting. Um, it's obviously sticky backed, which is really good. So you just peel it off and then yeah, stick it down. So it's not gonna go anywhere. And the great thing is obviously this one comes with a remote control, so you can change the color, which I think is just pretty awesome. And now it's time to put the uh, the top part with the bottom part. Um, yeah, so it's all looking good. Got to see the little uh, little power sort of connector lead thingy here. And yeah, just simply a case of attaching one into the other. So it's a good thing now that if it do any mistakes, anything goes wrong with it, the two parts can come well apart. And there we go, as simple as that. So I say the top connects to the uh, the bottom bit really nicely. So there's magnets in each corner, so that's not going to come off either. And then yeah, plug it in, and yes, it works, which is pretty awesome. And then say little controller, so you can change the colour. And so I like the idea of this. So whatever sort of team you're playing, um, you can be sort of obviously the blue for the Space Marines, green for good old orcs, and then whatever colours for well whatever else. And then just in case of getting all the figures, obviously these were all painted uh, in separate videos. So there's a long list of those guys. I'll try and do a little uh, thingy at the end so you can click on it and you can see how I painted all the miniatures and made them. Um, but yeah, really love how they look. And so the Space Marines, these all uh, definitely a good little matchup. So I was very fortunate that all the miniatures were um, sent to me free of charge. And they were sent to me by Chaos Cards, Glass Hammer Gaming, and Firestorm Games. So there's links to all those guys. Um, yeah, go check them out. They're really lovely people. And as I say, all these miniatures were sent to me free of charge, uh, which obviously made it a lot easier for me to be able to make this video because obviously, well, Warhammer miniatures aren't exactly the uh, the cheapest of things. So yeah, much appreciated. So again, go, guys, go check out Chaos Cards, Glass Hammer Gaming, and Firestorm Games as they really have helped out so much. And there we go, after two years of wanting to make a Warhammer 40k chess set, I've finally been able to do it because now, well, I love painting, which is pretty awesome. And the great thing about this kind of chess set is, in the future, if I want to make uh, like a Tyranids um, team, I can make one of them up, or any other of sort of Warhammer 40k faction, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, guys, don't forget, I'm going to be going down to Chaos Cards in Folkestone, Kent, on the 21st of this month. So that's the 21st of January. I'm going to be going down to Chaos Cards in Folkestone, taking this with me. Um, I'm going to be leaving it there for a couple of months, I reckon. So if you want to see it, or if you want to see me, pop down. That'd be awesome. Um, I'm not sure the exact time I'm going to be there just yet. But when I do, I will make a post about it, just so everyone knows when I'm going to be there. Because um, I think we're going to try, if we can, to do like a little painting session. So if you want to come down and, well, say see me, see the board, and paint along, yeah, that'd be awesome, guys. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this. And yeah, if there's anything you want to see me sort of try, or do, or make, or paint in the future, yeah, let me know as well, because I like trying out new things. Okay, guys, well, you will take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.